Okay, that's to sum up for fun. Here we are talking about function and sequence. And the connection between the function and the sequence is that if you plug in n into the function, you actually get the sequence. So n is good for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Just positive whole numbers. And here we have two statements on the spot. The first one says, suppose we have the limit as x goes to infinity of the function equals to some number l. Then, can we conclude that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence equal to l as well? And the second statement, it's just the converse of the first one, which it says, if you have the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence equal to l, if you have this first, then can we conclude that the limit as x goes to infinity of the function equals to l as well? They sound really similar and both of them sound really believable. But unfortunately, only one of them is true and the other one is false. As always, please pause the video and think about them first. Okay, this right here is true. This right here is false. So let me just write this down for you guys first and then I'm gonna talk about why these are the cases, right? Let's talk about why this one is true. And let me just give you guys a picture first and then I'll also write down the definition. I'm not going to write down the whole proof though. So here, you see, we are given that the limit as x goes to infinity of the function equals to l. And let me just draw a function as illustration. Suppose the function looks like the following. We know that this is equal to l. That means the function has a horizontal acetone, right? And let me just draw my picture to be like this maybe, okay? So as you can see, this right here is pretty much the horizontal acetone. So I'll just put down a bunch of dots right here. This is not the dots for the graph or the sequence. This is just the horizontal acetone L, <laughs> right? So this is pretty much it. The curve in black, let me just call that to be F of X. And we have this first. And now, the connection between the function and the sequence is that to get the sequence, you're just plugging past the whole numbers into the f, right? In another word, if you want to come up with the graph of the sequence, you just look at this picture and then just pick out the integer values, past the integer values. So suppose this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Well, if you just go from here, up here, this is going to be your A1. Likewise, from here, up here, this is going to be the value for A2. And likewise, value for A3, and A4, and A5, and of course, keeps on going forever. But as you can see, this ANs, they have to leave on the curve. And because this curve is converging to the horizontal acetone L. Of course, this has to converge to L as well. So it is correct that to say, if the limit as X goes to infinity of the function is equal to L, then we must have the limit as N goes to infinity of the sequence equal to L as well. Remember, the idea is that x can be any real numbers as long as it's in the domain of the function. n is just positive whole numbers. So this is, of course, a stronger statement. And this is a weaker statement. A strong statement implies the weaker statement. That's pretty much it, right? And just to kind of impress you guys about the, the pure math side of this kind of things, I will write down the definition for you guys. So precisely speaking, this right here is the following. We are talking about for all epsilon greater than zero. This means just like the little distance or the little error between the actual uh, limit and the value of the function. But let me just continue right down the definition first. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some big number and we'll usually put on m. And of course, let's talk about the positive side because x is toward positive infinity. Some big number m such that if x is past that point m, past that big value m, then 
we are going to have that the distance between the value of the function and the limit, it has to be less than epsilon. Meaning that you can make epsilon as whatever you want, like as small as you would like. But there will always be a big number such that once x passes that big number, the distance is actually you know, less than epsilon. That's the idea. And you can guess the definition of this right here. Instead of putting down x, you put down n, and n is just uh, past the whole number. And once again, this will of course imply that because x can be anything, <laughs> any real numbers as long as it's on the domain. But <laughs> n is just uh, uh, past the whole number, so of course, yeah. I'm not going to write down whole proof, I just want to put on the definition just to show you guys that I know that definition, right? <laughs> Anyway, now let's talk about this, and that's actually the main purpose of this video. And I wanted to show you why this statement actually does not imply this run right here. And to do so, I will just have to provide a counter example for you guys. And I will be using a graph to help me out with my thought process. Now, I need to find a sequence a n so that it actually converges to L, but the function, where if you plug in n into the function, it's equal to a n, okay? That function actually does not go to L, right? And now I have to think about it like that. And you know, this is actually a weaker statement because n is just past the whole number. And I want this to converge to L. And remember, to graph a n, it's just a bunch of dots. Let me just use this run right here. I'm going to just let a n to be 0 for all n. So that means when n is equal to 1, it's at zero, and then when n is equal to two, it's zero, and when n is three, zero, four is zero, and so on, okay? One, two, three, four, five, so on, so on, so on. So as you can see, a n, of course, will go to zero, right? And now, I just have to think about the function. All I have to make sure is that the function will have to cross all of these points, but the function does not converge to a horizontal as though, what can we do? Well, as long as I go maybe from here, and then up, hit this point, and then go down, up again, hit this point, and then so on, like this. How's that? Yeah, I can just have the function keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And of course, to come up with a legitimate function, we can just use the sine curve to help us out, right? And of course, if you want to have the negative side, that's okay too. That doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's pretty much it. As long as you don't make this smaller, 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 as long as you keep the same amplitude like this, you are good. Because you know the sine wave does not converge to a limit. So let me just write this down for you guys. Let me write down the function first. f of x. This right here, I want to use sine because I start with zero. So this is sine, and we know sine of n pi, it's always going to be zero, right? Sine of one pi is zero, sine of two pi is zero, sine of three pi is zero, and so on. But here, the function, I have to use x. So I'll just put down pi x. This right here is my function, and this is going to be the curve in black. And for a n, this is just the time that we plug in n into f, so we get f of n. And in another word, we just get sine of pi n right here. I'm sorry, it's not pi m. I should have used m. I'm such a bad friend. I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, in fact, this is always going to be 0 for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Of course, including the negative numbers as well. But here, we're just talking about plus the whole number n. So from here, you will see that, check this out. The limit as n goes to infinity of a n, which is that, which is sine of pi n. This is just the limit as n goes to infinity of zeros. And of course, the limit is equal to zero, right? But if you take the limit as x goes to infinity of the function, which is sine of pi x, like this. Well, as you can see, this right here, it's always between negative 1 and positive 1. It goes up and down, up and down, right? In fact, here, I will just tell you, does not, let me just spell it out, does not exist. And of course, you see, 
This limit does not match with that. So this is still a good example for showing this is false. And this is so cool, isn't it? And now here is the deal. Sometimes when you are trying to calculate a limit as n goes to infinity of some sequence a n, it might be hard to do. In that case, go ahead and change that to the function situation because if the function situation gives you a nice limit by this right here, you can conclude that the sequence has the same limit as well. And the benefit of talking about the function situation is so that you can use Lapidot's rule, right? So that's the beauty of this right here. And this is right here, you just have to be careful, it does not go the other way around. When you have a bunch of dots converge to a number, it doesn't mean that the curve will also be nicely behaved. <laughs> anyway, I also want to thank the uh, subscriber who brought this up to my attention, and this is a great video idea. And yeah, hopefully you guys all like this video, and if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to make interesting math videos for you guys. And as always, this is it.